Please listen carefully. Good morning, Alex. I wanted to talk about something that's really important to stories and anything involving a hero, and that's a villain. I'm not talking about the tragic anti-hero. I'm not talking about Dexter. No, I'm talking about people who are the bad guys. They are the villains in the story, and you're not supposed to necessarily love them or grow attached to them, but you do anyway. Now the Buggers are the main bad guys in Ender's Game. They're this alien race of strange ant-like creatures who come to Earth and just sort of lay waste to the place. And the whole story of Ender's Game is that humanity is trying to build an army of children to then attack the Buggers and save the planet. Even though they're the bad guys, they're not really the bad guys. We find out that the Buggers, they weren't thinking that they were killing us, that they were wiping out an individual person with a personality and a spirit. In their mind, they were just knocking off drones who really didn't have any self. They were just an appendage to the greater body of the hive. Now speaking of not necessarily bad guys, let's talk about QT1 from iRobot. He's not really a villain, but he also doesn't take any crap from humans and sort of just takes over this station that could completely destroy the entire planet Earth. What really makes this story interesting is that QT1 does all this because he reasons it out logically. He notices that the entire station is focused on just collecting this energy and transmitting the beam. And as such, that must be his creator. And clearly, he is superior to humans because the humans serve the station, but they're weak. They're not as powerful as QT1. Therefore, QT1 is superior to the humans. And that's just, it's interesting to me because it's all about who are we? And if we take everything to the logical extremes, what will we find out about ourselves? And then you have the tragic villains. The ones who are bad guys, but they're doing it for reasons that you can really, that really make sense. Like Magneto. He is all about preserving his species, to preserve his race. And that's built upon the fact that he survived Nazi concentration camps. He has seen the worst that humanity can throw at you, and he fears that that's what's coming in the future for mutants. Really, I think my favorite supervillain of all time is Mr. Freeze. I think Mr. Freeze should just get his own storyline. Like, I want to see the tragic descent of Mr. Freeze from loving husband to supervillain doing everything in his power to save his wife. Yeah, he's a supervillain. He hurts people. But if the love of your life, the only thing in the world that you cared about, could only be saved by you hurting other people, how far would you go? And in Mr. Freeze's case, it's pretty far. He has worked this out logically in his mind. He has no choice. He doesn't want to be a supervillain. It's not something that he set out and said, you know what, I'm gonna take over the world. No, he is focused entirely on saving the woman he loves. And that just makes him a fantastic character that you can empathize with. And really, that's the kind of villains we need. I think it's things like that that make these villains my favorites. It's because if you look at them, you can understand them. You can see that in their minds, they're not the villains, they're the victims. That the world has turned against them and that they have to fight back. If we thought about that in relation to our own lives, we would realize that sometimes the people we think are the bad guys in reality, they're not necessarily the bad guys in their own minds. They have reasons for doing the things that they do, and if we can understand the reasons that they're doing those things, maybe we can solve our problems without resulting in conflict and warfare. But maybe that's just me being too hopeful. Maybe the fact is that our cultures are so different sometimes that war is inevitable, just like between the buggers and the humans. So. I want to know what you think. I want to know who your top villains are. And anybody who's watching from home, leave us a comment or send us a tweet and tell me what villain you think is the best villain of all time and why you think that's the case.